hey guys welcome back to the channel and this new tutorial on pytorch so in previous uh, few videos we learned about uh, 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 attention masking like how we do it in decoder and how we do it in coder in this video we will talk about another very important concept uh, known as dropout so dropout is mainly useful to do the regularization so regularization mainly helps to prevent the overfitting like the model generalizes well if the weights are regularized so there are other techniques as well but dropout is shown to be very effective compared to others okay so internally dropout uses a Bernoulli distribution we will look at it uh, very basics like uh, how uh, we use it in pytorch okay and in a batch each sample will be zeroed out uh, independently so the dropout is applied on each and every sample in a batch separately and at the end the output are scaled by a factor of 1 upon 1 minus p if the probability is uh, 0 0.3 so it will be scaled like 1 upon 1 minus 0 0.3 which is 1 upon 0 0.7 okay and uh, during evaluation the model uh, simply computes an identity function so the dropout is only applied during the training so this is very important to remember so when we have a layer in our model so it will be only active when we run the training during the evaluation it should be deactivated and we will see like how we can deactivate it using eval function okay so let us dive in and start with uh, uh, simply learning about basics of Bernoulli okay so to learn about Bernoulli let us create a simple sampler okay so let us say Bernoulli sampler is equal to we will simply create a, a instance of Bernoulli class and it takes probability so we will say probability is equal to p and let us define p also here p is equal to let us say 0 0.3 okay so what does this mean that uh, when the probability is set to be 0.3 it means that 30% uh, it will be 1 and 70% it will be zeros okay okay so next is to sample from this okay so we can simply call samples is equal to Bernoulli sampler dot sample what it accept is the shape okay and we can simply pass let us say we want to have a shape of 20 and it should be a shape so we will pass it as a tuple let us now print the sample so it should be zeros and ones so it will be 30 percent of time it should be one and 70 percent times it will be zero so it is not like it will be uh, accurate so it will be more towards that uh, probability distribution when we sample a lot of samples from it okay so let us say uh, we have 20 samples then it should not be necessarily to be 30 percent one and 70 percent of zeros it would be slightly uh, here and there okay so let us run and see it so now you see like we have uh, ones and zeros and to compute like how many of them are zero and ones we can simply uh, call print so let us call uh, samples dot count zeros let us say count non zeros so it will count all non zeros and if you divide it by length of samples uh, so it will be a percentage of uh, ones okay so let us run and see it okay so it should be zero not zero so let us read and see it so now you see it is saying 0 0.45 whereas the probability we passed is uh, 0 0.3 so if we keep increasing the tensor size let us say 2000 it will uh, reach or it will uh, tend towards uh, 0 0.3 okay so let us run it again so now you see it is 298 and if we keep increasing let us say it more now it should be very close to 0.3 percent 
now you see it is uh, very close like it is 0.31 it will keep increasing so uh, to to get the probability actually what we provided we should sample a lot to to be exact so that's why it is not necessarily that always we get 30 percent of the uh, of the units are 30 percent of the items uh, are zeroed in dropout event okay we will see that in next so let us create a dropout model and uh, learn that how it works so let us say dropout model is equal to nn so the dropout module is uh, in nn package so we will simply import nn and then we'll simply say dropout so the default probability is 0.5 if you don't pass anything so if you pass in no probability it will be 50 percent of uh, ones and 50 percent of zeros and if we pass the probability it will be like that and there is another uh, argument which is in place which is by default false so in place is like if you pass that uh, argument so it will do the tensor uh, dropout in place we don't need to get any output from that okay but it is uh, it is uh, okay to have it uh, false so let us create a tensor of uh, let us say same 20 samples so let us say tensor is equal to torch dot let us create a random tensor and let us say it's a uh, 20 uh, uh, items in it okay now let us uh, apply uh, let us print it actually print tensor and another thing that we will do is uh, we will print the scale as well like as we know that after applying dropout the final output is scaled with one upon one minus p okay so what we will do is we will also print the scaled output so what we will do is we will multiply tensor into 1 upon 1 minus p okay and now what we will do is we will pass through the tensor with dropout layer okay it is simply like we call the model and then input it to the model and we will get the output okay so now let us run and see the output so now if you look at carefully this is our original tensor and this is our scale tensor okay where uh, the output would be so at you can see this is the output after the dropout layer okay so in this you will see like some of them are zeros okay that's what it does and be careful here like uh, number of ones we get those many would be zero okay so let us look at it again so here we are saying that 30 percent of time it will uh, produce the bernoulli distribution will produce ones and those ones will result into uh, dropping out or zeroing out the input tensor okay so in that sense 30 percent of the input tensor would be zero okay so here we have one and only two zeros which is uh, like uh, 10 percent not 30 percent okay so if the size of the tensor keep increasing uh, it is more likely that it will be exactly same as much we set as a probability okay and uh, next let us look at like how we how it behaves when we uh, do the evaluation okay so to convert a model or any pytorch model to uh, into eval mode by default when we create it it is in train mode okay and to convert convert it into a eval mode we simply call dropout model is equal to dropout dot eval and that's all so when the model is in evaluation mode the dropout layer is actually disabled so in other words the dropout sampling would be always uh, identity function okay so it will always uh, always uh, sample all zeros in Bernoulli distribution okay so nothing will be masked in that sense or nothing will be zeroed so now if we will pass through the tensor through the dropout model 
it won't change anything it will be exactly same as the input tensor okay so let us run and see it so now if you look at carefully here it is exactly same as what we pass as the original tensor okay and now to convert it back into a train mode we simply run dot train on the model okay so to convert it into train we simply say train okay now the dropout model is converted into train mode and now it will do the dropout again okay so let us run and see it again so you can see here now it is again started uh, doing the zeroing okay in the, in this case you can see it is much more like uh, earlier and uh, as we increase the number of samples in a batch for example let us say now we have two batch two samples so each sample would be zeroed independently so 30 percent of the first sample would be zeroed and 30 percent of the second sample would be zeroed okay so it is done on sample by sample not the whole input that you pass it through okay so now let us run that uh, how it works so now if you look at carefully this is the first input so it is uh, masked independently and the other one the second one is also masked independently okay so i hope that is clear like how dropout works in general with the uh, pytorch model and uh, in next video we will learn another very interesting uh, regularization technique as well which is called layer norm and uh, that will complete our all the basic components required to implement the transformer layer okay so thanks for watching bye for now take care see you in the next